Welcome to the Big Four Accounting Firms podcast, brought to you by BigFourAccountingFirms.com. Well, today, April 17th, 2023, has to be one of the lowest points in ENY's history. Today, uh, ENY formally announced, in the U.S. at least, that they're going to be laying 3,000 people off. It was already announced previously, or it leaked out in the UK that this was going to happen as well in the UK. So it seems to be like a worldwide thing where, you know, I has determined that they're going to have layoffs. Now what's weird is this is directly coupled with them calling off their split up plans and project Everest and project Everest was where they're going to split up the audit firm and the consulting firm. And then, um, IPO the consulting branch of ENY. So this is just huge news in the big four, especially after the executives uh, announced that the split up was going to happen. It was previously called off or it was rumored to be called off. And then the executives or the CEO said that it was going to go forward, guaranteeing that it was going to go forward. And then now here we are a couple of months later and it's completely called off. And also people are getting laid off and also who knows what's going on with compensation. Reportedly it's the, there's still going to be raises and bonuses. Uh, but just like all the big four, it all depends on the results. Now we know at the big four, th- this is not surprising either because we are raising questions when this was first announced of like, why would you do this during supply chain problems, economic downturn, but management was just talking about how great the economy was, despite signs that it was, there was huge struggles everywhere, especially with EY because EY audits tech companies and tech companies were one of the, some of the first companies to be experiencing uh, bad times during the economy. But, Apparently, what's really done ENY in is venture capital. Uh, apparently, they've done a lot of work with venture capital, and venture capital has completely stopped all kinds of work, and therefore, it, but also M and A. So, and ENY has a different division for M and A uh, consulting, and so that has completely halted in a lot of areas, and so. There's just a big swath of revenue that's gone. And what does that mean? That means people with low or no utilization. And so it just makes them easy targets for layoffs. And and I'm sure ENY was waiting to do this until after the split up. But now that it's called off, uh, they're just going to go through with it. And the reason I say that is because how did ENY know to lay these people off right after the split up? or right after the split up was called off. It's because they already had this plan, whether the split up happened or it didn't, they were going to lay these people off. And they were just painting a rosy picture. But, I mean, this is just crazy news. And the other thing, the ENY, at least ENY UK was a little bit more straightforward, and they said that, or I, I guess they didn't really say it, it just leaked out that that they were a lot, they knew a lot of people were going to leave. Um, And just morale is going to be low and they're going to have to lay people off. Uh, but I think a lot of people are going to leave. I think a lot of trust has been lost in ENY executives because how could you trust these people? Cause there's just so many failures throughout this process of thinking, uh, forcing a split, when it didn't make sense, saying that it was going to happen, it didn't happen. And now you expect people to believe that you're going to have bonuses and, and pay raises. And what happens if you don't go through with that? It's just like, how do you, how do you believe these executives? This is just, but I mean, I talk about this frequently on this podcast about big four partners and over the years, people, a lot of the times they don't like it. Um, say it's pessimistic. 
And, but I mean, you know, you also don't have to listen to this podcast if you don't like it. But the reason I bring it up is because, um, why I talk so frequently about the, I guess the best way I can say is like the sociopathy of partners. They're sociopathic. They're very political and mechanical and they, they promise things that they don't deliver and, and they say they do things that they don't do. And, and, and that's just what it makes it hard to work at the big four. And I talk about that frequently on this pod, this podcast. Like if they were just a little bit more genuine, they don't want to be so hard and, and, and more realistic as well, because it was obvious even an associate could be asking, like, why the heck are we doing this deal right now? It doesn't make sense. But the executives are, you know, synergy, this opportunity, there's going to be plenty of, op- there's more opportunity after the split, blah, 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 selling smoke and mirrors. And, and that's just what partners do. But it it's also open, sh- this should open up people's eyes like never before to the big four accounting firms because of, of the, the amount of lying that went on here. And the amount of behind the scenes scheming, laying people off after this. But it, it, it's a good learning lesson for young people that you shouldn't trust partners. They got to where they were by political planning and scheming, not necessarily being technical. And that's what I, I, I preach that on this podcast. And this just proves it. And what does this also prove? As, as we saw with the bank collapses, the big four accountings, big four accounts turns out aren't that good at accounting. <laughs> if they were good at accounting, they would have known to wait to do the split up until a better economic time, especially if you're trying to sell part of your company in an initial public offering. And then on top of that, you also like you do that during an economic downturn is one thing, but you're also spending money planning that, going through with it into an economic downturn. So you make the economic downturn that much worse for your firm. And then you change people's livelihoods um, in the middle of that. But I mean, the, after, the good thing too about this time period is that it's close to COVID and the big four blew it during COVID. They, they couldn't see COVID coming and the downturn from that and they overhired. They couldn't. They didn't see this economic downturn, and now they're starting to lay off people. And, and I think the other firms will too, especially in consulting and the M and A and venture capital. It's just going to happen, or the, there's going to be hiring freezes, bonus freezes, offers for new hires are going to be pulled back or heavily reduced. There's just a whole lot of things that are going to happen, and it's just proof that the big four accounting firms cannot forecast are not good at accounting, are not good at budgeting, even though you have to use retain, even though you have to use all kind of budgeting, forecasting things in the big four accounting firms, they all use the same stuff. They all have the same approach. They all have different softwares to do it, but they all make you budget everything, budget your hours, sales, et cetera. And it still doesn't help them prepare for economic downturns. But the other thing, too, is that EOI trying to pitch this to their people in a professional manner today using using all kinds of PR language is just wrong. They, they should just completely own it and say they blew it. Somebody needs to, to dive on the sword or the grenade, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, well, I think a lot of people will. And I think a lot of partners are going to leave after this. Um at least partners in the executive team, because this is, I think it's too embarrassing to live down, but also they're going to face opposition. Like Carmine DeCibio is going to face opposition to anything he has planned in the future. And I think Julie Bolin and other members of the executive team will as well. I think uh, the way they've, the way they've, spoken about this or their lack of speaking about this in public is also it also speaks volumes but the loss of trust of ENY not necessarily in the market yet but with their staff and the people employed there is utterly destroyed and 
as far as the future goes, I think EY is going to get what they want from a quote unquote cost cutting measure because they're going to have layoffs. But also, I think a lot of people are going to leave because of the lack of trust. But I think also the partners are going to like that. And, but, but also from a political perspective and a career, if people, if, if you want career advice, this is, this is where, where you strike. This is really where the quote unquote opportunities are. Opportunities are not where the partners are telling you there, there's opportunities. Um, the opportunities are where you see them. Now here is, is a moment of chaos within ENY, right? And, and chaos is where you thrive in the big four accounting firms. Is really where you, you push past everybody. It's when there's chaos. When there's a chaos on an engagement and you book all your hours and you just leapfrog a bunch of people. There's chaos on an engagement and there's so much chaos. You have to fix so many things you learn. You learn because there's so much things coming at you at once. Here at ENY, the executive team has failed. Partners have failed. People are going to be demotivated. And here where opportunities are going to open up because people are going to be laid off, people are going to leave, and people are going to leave quickly. And the people that are left, they're going to be the ones that move up quickly. The people that, that sift through this, present a good face, sit in their seat, spoken many times on this podcast, that sitting in your seat is the best way to move forward at the big four accounting firms. So the people that are, are left standing after this complete mess are going to do well. Now, it's going to take years to see the fruits of that come to fruition. And it, it's going to be when the economy goes up and clients start spending, well, all those people that stayed back, gained the knowledge, moved up when there was, moved up, got promotions when there was little incentive to do so, yet they still did it. They're going to be the next in line to be partners once all those clients come rolling back in. And here at the big four accounting firms, they've been doing this for so long that we've seen the, the economic downturns, COVID, financial crisis, and things do turn around. Maybe not in the economy really quickly, but clients, once, once things start turning around slowly, they start spending money. And once money gets started spent, that's when partners are made. And so this is going to separate the strong from the weak-minded. And, and I think many of the people in the executive team are weak-minded. And many people, many partners too. And so I think a lot of them will, will, will leave, give up, start infighting, um, just get really depressed. Who knows? But it's, it, this is where the opportunities are. When the partners, when the partners are getting depressed and things like that, that's where the opportunities are because the firm is still one of the big four accounting firms. And, and I guess that's a, another crazy thing too, was that, you know, we thought the big four accounting firms are going to be big five, whatever. Nope. Stay in the big four. They're going to be the big four. People are still going to use the big four. People are still going to use ENY. So, if you're a young person and you're working at ENY and you're not weak-minded uh, and you don't really care about validation from partners and stuff like that, then this is a good opportunity to move up because a lot of weak-minded people are going to give up during this time period. But there's a lot more to come from this. I'll have a lot more thoughts on this in the future. So make sure to subscribe to the podcast. I'm also We also did a little write-up about the latest news and we'll be putting that in the show notes as a link so make sure to check that out thanks for listening